Hello, today we're going to talk about why my body is shaped like this. So once again, before we get started, I just want y'all to be aware that we are going to be talking about some serious things in this video. If you have your kids watching, watch with caution and be prepared for some questions after. Anybody who's followed me on Snapchat or Instagram for any period of time in the last six years, y'all know I have had multiple problems with my body. Today we're going to talk about one of those, as you can see in the title. I'm going to talk about giving up my child for adoption. If you didn't watch part one, it's going to be up there and in the description. And there is a part three coming talking about my issues with infertility before this because it needs to be talked about when you're talking about adoption. Oh, that's a lot of jiggle. I'm gonna get in trouble. To get started, if you want to check my description, I have all of the links to my music down there. It's gonna be Spotify, Apple Music. I do also have it on YouTube as well. You can use it as a TikTok sound if you really want to. I don't care, do whatever you want. Support my music. I have a new single coming out soon. I will probably be posting on Instagram and Snapchat first when that's going to be out. So make sure to follow me there. All my socials will also be in the description. And do not forget to turn on your notifications for when part three of this series is going up. I think that's all that crap. Oh, I mentioned in the previous video, I have a podcast. If you want to listen to it, it's down there too. Tell me if you think I should keep going because it's kind of related. I basically spent the last, I forgot how to math, seven, it was 2015, seven years of my life thinking I couldn't have kids. And then I got pregnant. You want to know how I found out? I got COVID. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> I always joke about that because I literally didn't get sick since I had the, I had swine flu in like 2009. That's how long it's been since I got sick. So I was like, this is a little suspicious. The math ain't math. And then my sister's like, well, how's your mood? And I was like, well, it's all over the place, but that's normal. So I found out I was pregnant last November, actually literally November 1st of last year. So it has been one year of hell. This sucks, okay? This sucks. We're gonna talk about it. I found out I was pregnant. Basically, like, the day after I was allowed to go outside again after having COVID, I took a pregnancy test, and voila. And I thought everything was great. I was six months sober. I, oh, I'm gonna be talking about that in a future video, so again, turn on your notifications. I was six months sober, I was in a good relationship, and I've never been in a good relationship ever, um, so that was crazy. We're gonna move into a house instead of an apartment. And then my mental health got really, 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 really bad. For those who don't know, I mentioned in my previous video, I have bipolar one disorder and I have the fun kind where I don't just have one manic episode, I almost have them on a schedule because I also have PCOS. If you don't know what that is, it is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Basically for me, all that really matters to this topic is it makes my manic episodes worse. So I have obviously had both since I hit puberty. That's just how it works. But it started getting really bad when I was about 16. I also have some other stuff that doesn't make it really easy to deal with my mental health. A lot of that I talked about in the previous video. Again, if you haven't watched that, it's up there and in the description. So I basically had a manic episode kind of brought on by the combination of things, pregnancy, hormones, having COVID, so being sleep deprived and sick, and then the stress of moving. Brought on a manic episode, and it was the worst one I've had since uh, before I got sober. I experience psychosis when I'm manic, which means I don't really know what reality is. I think that there's people coming into my house to k me. I start seeing things if I'm too tired, and I don't sleep. So I really wanted to keep the baby. <laughs> And so I was like, uh, this is really bad. I'm not safe. I need help. So I got on medication for the first time in my life that actually worked. Because up until this point, I had been so terrified of mood stabilizers because when I was growing up, all I ever heard about was like lithium and Wellbutrin, all this horrible, horrible stuff. So I never took any mood stabilizers. I would take anti-anxiety medications, but then when I was manic, they didn't work at all. So for the first time ever, I was on something that worked and just reality just smacked me in the face. I was three months pregnant. I didn't have a job. I lost my job because I was manic. I gained so much weight so fast in the first trimester because I have PCOS that I had to be on a heart monitor. Um, for those who don't know, I had a heart attack when I was 23 and 
My brother has had heart problems his whole life, so I don't know if it was genetic or because of my other stuff. Nobody takes it seriously because I have anxiety. So I had to be on heart monitor for a few days, so that was great. They still didn't take it seriously. I didn't have a job and I had all these problems and I had been adjusting to a new medication, which thankfully worked right away, but I did have to change dose several times as my pregnancy hormones kept escalating. I also had problems uh, when I was on a birth control that basically was like a massive dose at one time. This is the name, there's lawsuits going on about it, so I'm not gonna say the name out loud. Please don't be on this if you have PCOS, just don't. So it basically turned out the same as that. I couldn't function, I couldn't sleep, I was extremely paranoid. I called the nurse almost every single day, crying because I wanted to know if I had eaten something that was gonna kill the baby. Like, I was so paranoid. I thought one time that if I ate flax seeds that I was just gonna have a miscarriage. So I really wanted to keep the baby. Like, I, I, I got the meds. I kept trying to have a job or have some kind of income the entire time, but I just kept not being able to do it. So as the months went on, it basically became more and more and more clear that we weren't gonna be able to do this financially. My partner also had a couple of other things going on that made it really difficult for him to keep a job. So I had to basically try and figure out what I was gonna do. I didn't wanna be homeless with a newborn baby. As I mentioned in my previous video, I am also adopted. So that is like the last thing I ever wanted to do because it has been horrible for me. I absolutely think it is the worst thing you could do and I think that it is legally buying a child and that is not okay. So I didn't wanna do that, but I didn't have the money to be able to do anything else. That's what we ended up doing. And at first it seemed like it was gonna be a really good thing. We found a family that also was in recovery, so they understood the like mental health and addiction stuff and that it could run in families. My whole family are addicts. I am the only one that's sober that I'm aware of. Addiction is a disease. We can talk about that in my other videos. So they were okay with all of that stuff. And you know, we've been in contact, have been able to see her, but uh, nobody told me. So the friend I mentioned in my first video that grew up poor, we would always get into arguments because he would say that it's different when it's your own kids and that my parents, my adoptive parents couldn't have possibly loved me as much as my birth parents and all this other stuff. I don't necessarily agree with that, but my views have changed a lot after physically producing another human. Changes, like literally your entire body changes, your life is at stake every single day. Nobody talks about the fact that pregnancy is still life-threatening, especially for women of color in the United States. We are three times more likely to die during pregnancy or childbirth than anybody else in the United States. So I was considered a high risk pregnancy between my health issues and my mental health issues. And I had to have, I think seven ultrasounds total. And normally you don't have very many of them. You have like the initial one that's like, it's a this or that at 20 weeks. I had one at eight. I had multiple, multiple ultrasounds the first two trimesters. And then I had another one at the very, very end. Thankfully, physically for the baby, everything went fine. For me, it did not. I also had to have an emergency C-section I have never had a surgery ever. I still have my appendix, I still have my tonsils, I still have my wisdom teeth. And I had to get my entire stomach cut open while I was awake. Again, I have psychosis. You can imagine this was a not fun experience. And then nobody told me how hard it would be to separate from them because I didn't really realize it until after, I guess. Like you can't explain it to a person. The last couple weeks before, my induction was scheduled. I was aware that like, I have had another person physically with me, like I'm pro-choice, but like I've had another person physically with me and they're gonna be gone. And so I decided I did not want to hold her after she was born because I knew it would make it worse. Statistically, I knew it would make it worse and harder to go through with the decision I'd made. I was trying to find a resource to explain this because I remember reading it when I was pregnant, but all of the resources I found basically are taking the side of the adoptive parents and they're calling it warning signs. 
that you are going to change your mind and decide to parent as a birth parent, I find that really insulting, so I'm not going to include those resources, but just know that if you do change your mind, you're not a bad person. There is help for you to be able to keep your baby and raise them in a healthy environment. I didn't know that that was the least of my worries. Again, I had a C-section, so normally the you know, the screaming that you imagine when babies come out because they're cold or whatever, that didn't happen. Like, no one told me that I would... I guess I shouldn't say anyone told me. I didn't think I had any maternal instinct. Like, I've never liked babysitting. The only time I ever liked babysitting was for a neighbor's kid who was autistic so we could, like, talk to each other. And I never was comfortable around my friend's kids. I have dated several people who had kids and never felt comfortable around them until they were, like, five to seven years old and I could talk to them. Um, I tell you, when they did the C-section and they took her out, she cried and it was like an I want food cry. It was not a what the f what I, what's going on? It was I'm hungry. And I didn't know I would know that. I'm not gonna cry, I did my makeup. I cried every single day that I was pregnant. Every single day from the day I got sick with COVID until like literally a month ago. And she's almost four months old. I cried every single day, so. Y'all already got your tears. Nobody told me that I would have that just happen because I didn't think I could. So now I get why he said it was different when it's your own kid. Um, it's not necessarily that like if you are a step parent or maybe you did adopt or whatever that you don't love the child, but like literally physically there's hormones that are different. I can't explain it. I'm not going to try to. I also thought I would not produce milk. I didn't think I would be healthy enough to be honest to produce milk. I did like two days later. I did not have the child with me to feed. That is the most traumatic thing that has ever happened to me ever. I don't know if I still have a video up about this, but I, I mean, if you follow me on Snapchat, I've talked about it. I was, I'm gonna say assaulted, in my own apartment two years ago. I would rather go through that again than go through the milk thing again. It hurts so bad, and all I could think is, I'm supposed to be feeding my baby every second of every day and i cried every second of every day until it stopped hurting and i tried to make them give her back because the paperwork wasn't finalized yet i still don't know if i'm okay with the fact that i couldn't that they didn't give her back because they they legally were required to so it's not like like they were going to they were going to and then i basically went well i still don't have a job and i'm on rent assistance and 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 because again, as I talked about in my first video, I was taught that money is the most important thing and that that's how you show you love someone and I didn't have any money. I literally grew up with money and I had to give up my child because I was poor because of my mental health taking over my life. So money does not fix these things. It, it, it will not fix it. So I ended up saying, all the stuff you're supposed to say and the paperwork was finalized and blah, blah 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 and now I don't have my child and I got some deflated saggy t now it's great so I had a really really hard time with that it was the worst thing that has ever happened to me ever and I again I had a heart attack when I was 23 I have been essayed in my own house before I have had many abusive relationships I'm a doctor myself that was the single worst thing that has ever happened to me ever ever and i've talked to people who do have their kids and breastfed and stuff and they hated it too it is so physically painful and emotionally painful and when you don't have the kid with you it's even worse uh one of my friends had a miscarriage and it was far enough along that she did produce milk and she had a horrible time with it too i'm going to talk about this more in the next videos but my two miscarriages that i had were soon enough that that didn't happen to me so i had no idea what it would be like and it was horrible it hurts so bad again i was in labor without an epidural for a good four hours of it and i had a c-section that yeah. hurt worse i just thought okay well i guess now that all of the physical stuff is gone it's gonna be okay right no no it got worse remember what i talked about in the first video my birth mother had bipolar and was not on medication. And my parents thought her letters were scary because of that. 
I am on medication, but because of my heart condition, I can't change the dose anymore. I'm on a quarter of the maximum dose. They told me that normally they would start someone like me with my level of psychosis on three times the dose I'm on. I can't take it because of my heart problems. So sometimes the crazy still comes out. At one point, the adoptive parents of my child were not going to let me see her because they didn't like how I was grieving. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this in because I don't know if they're gonna try to get mad at me for posting it. So I didn't get to hold my child, I didn't get to feed my child, and I almost didn't get to see her in the first month of her life. And I still had to go to work because I got a job. I got hired at a factory job the day before I was due. And I went to work three weeks after, still bleeding a lot because that was the only way I could distract myself from how terrible it had been for the last, you know, seven months of my life. Also, I moved four times while I was pregnant and at one point was sleeping on a couch. Again, I literally was adopted. I grew up with rich white parents and this still all happened to me because of my mental health. Adoption is not a solution to you not being able to have kids. It hurts the child and the parents so much. Do not buy someone's child for the love of God or whatever the f you believe in. Just don't. And do not tell your adopted child that they should be grateful. I have a really hard time talking about this because I was told my whole life that I should be grateful. Most of us are. It's a very common experience. I did link a bunch of resources about that in the description of my first video. I am going to put them in this one as well. The number one most important thing about this is statistically, the birth mother is very, very, very likely to commit suicide after going through this, more so than with a miscarriage. I am just one person. I do not speak for the entire adoptee community. However, these resources, and they're also in the description, might enlighten you as to just how many of us agree with this. It's not just a quick fix for you not being able to have kids on your own or not being able to afford in vitro. By the way, adoption in the United States is also more expensive than in vitro. It's not the answer. I genuinely regret the decision and also, if I had known that I would be able to, I guess, financially be okay within a couple months, I would not have made that decision. I have struggled with uh, psychosis since I was 16. I, uh, I dropped out of college twice. I almost failed high school just by my attendance. I actually graduated with a 4.2 GPA because I passed all the tests. I did not show up for half of my senior year. I had attendance issues. In college, I had attendance issues with every single job I've ever had, and I have lost several jobs because of it. Most of the jobs I've had have quit before I've gotten fired because of my attendance, because of my mental health. So I never thought I would be financially in any kind of position to raise a child if I knew that being on medication and literally just not being pregnant and not having all these hormones going crazy in my body would make it possible for me to make a living. I would have kept her. I did not know that was going to happen. I had no reason to believe it would because for the last, you know, almost 10 years of my life, I have not been able to do anything really long-term and commit to it without my mental health getting in the way. So, I don't know. I guess that's all I really want to say about it. Um, I am not going to post or share pictures or videos of my child, but she is healthy, she is happy, as far as I know. And I sincerely hope that she's one of those few people that does think it was a gift and doesn't struggle because of it. But statistically, that's probably not gonna happen. And now I have to spend the rest of my life wondering if I just cursed my child to have the same childhood that I did. So if you think adoption, again, is a backup option to your infertility and your body not working right, from someone who's been through both, it's not. Okay, get a dog. Get a cat. They live for like 18 years. They'll be in your house for as long as a child would. Do not adopt a baby, okay? Do not buy someone's baby. Get, get a cat or a dog or a, a snake. They live for 40 years. 
get a turtle. That is all I have for this video. Sorry it ended on a more aggressive note, but this is not a topic I like talking about. It's more one that I feel is necessary because not a lot of people really get to talk about it and feel that they're actually being heard. So if you relate to any of this, let me know in the comments. If you've been through it yourself, you are not alone. Please talk to each other in the comments. Again, like with my first video, I will probably not be reading or responding to a lot of them because I'm, again, she's literally like four or five months old. I'm still dealing with this myself. So I'm probably not gonna respond to a lot of comments, but just know this is a safe place to talk about it. Do not talk over other people, but if you relate to this or you learn something from it, let me know. And again, like with the last video, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications because the third video will be going up shortly. And that is going to talk about my experience with infertility because you just have to talk about that when you're talking about adoption. It's nine times out of 10, including in the situation with my adoptive parents and the parents that adopted my baby. That is why they're doing it because they can't have their own kids. So I will talk about my experience with that in the next video. Make sure you got your notifications on and thanks for watching this, even though it's not the most fun thing to talk about. Good boy.